Alright, so today we're going to be working on Lesson 9, which is all about using animation in multimedia. The animation pane enables you to manage all the animation effects on the active slides. Transitions are animated effects that occur when you move from slide to, to another slide. Okay, they differ from animations in that animations apply to individual items on a slide, whereas transitions apply to the entire slide. Alright, so we're going to start PowerPoint, and it tells us to open up Lobby. So I'm going to go to my InfoTech folder, PowerPoint, um, Lesson 9. Oops, let's go to Data Files. Lesson 9, and we're going to open up Lobby. Close out of that. Enable the editing. We're going to go to File, Enable Editing. Do that again. Then File, Save As. And we'll go to our PowerPoint Lesson 9 folder, and we'll save it as Lobby Final Version 1. Alright, let's readjust this here. Okay, um, so it says click the slide sorter view on the view tab. And then it says to select slide 2. We're going to click the transitions tab and click the more button next to the transitions slide group. Okay, it tells us to click on the honeycomb effect. The effect is previewed immediately on slide 2, as you can see. Notice that there is a small star into the below and to the right of slide 2. This indicates that a transition or animation has been applied. On the transition tab, in the timing group, we're going to um, set the duration to 6 seconds. I prefer just to type it in. Okay. This action sets the transition to execute in 6 seconds. We're going to open up the sound drop down list and we're going to choose camera. So it added a sound effect of a camera shutter opening and closing at this transition. It tells us to click on preview in the preview group. Okay, and so you can hear the sound and then it takes a little bit longer for the honeycomb effect to resume. We're going to click the more button again. Okay, and this time we're going to select um, in the subtle group, we're going to choose wipe to apply wipe transition to the selected side. It tells us to click effects options. Okay, a menu of effects options is selected and we're going to choose from left. The new effect option is previewed on the slide automatically. We're going to choose apply to all. The transition effect is copied to all of the other slides in the presentation. Now all slides have a star icon beneath them. On the slideshow tab, we're going to click from the beginning. to watch our presentation as we click through the slides. Okay, when finished, press escape. 
to return the slide sorter view and it tells us to save our presentation. Take note, in PowerPoint 2016 there is a new transition called Morph. Let's look at this. I don't see it. Huh. Well, it says this transition allows you to move objects from one slide to their new location on another slide. The most effective way to use morph transition is to duplicate the slide, move the objects around to their new places, and then apply the morph transition. Huh. All right. Next, we're going to set slides to advance manually or automatically. In slide sorter view, says to click slide 1 to select it. On the transitions tab in the timing group it tells us to mark the after button or checkbox to indicate that the slide should advance manually after a certain amount of time has passed. Click the up increment until it reads 10 seconds. Okay. We're going to clear the on mouse click button and we're going to choose apply to all. Okay, it says click the slideshow tab and click from the beginning and then begin to watch the presentation. Try clicking the mouse and notice that it does not advance to the next slide. So if I click it doesn't advance. I have to wait 10 seconds for it to go to the next slide. Okay, if you don't want to wait to watch the whole presentation, just press escape. Okay, on the transitions tab, it tells us to click to mark the on mouse click checkbox, and then we're going to click apply to all. Now the slides will advance automatically after 10 seconds or earlier as when the mouse is clicked before 10 seconds elapses. We're going to save the presentation. Next we're going to animate slide content. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to save our um, final version 1 copy as um, lobby final version 2. Okay, so make sure you save as. I'm going to hit yes because I want to replace that old version. Okay, so it tells us to click on the normal view. Okay, and it tells us to go to slide 2. And we're going to click on the bulleted list to move um, the insertion point there. So we want to be clicked inside here. On the animations tab, we're going to click on add animation. And we're going to select fly in. Let's see, here it is. Okay. Next, we're going to click the effects options button. And we're going to choose from top to left. The effect is previewed. Notice that each bullet point flies in separately. Next, it tells us to click the Effects Options button again. And this time, we're going to choose All at Once. The effect is previewed. Notice that all the bullet points fly in at once. Okay, you see these ones over here to the side? That means, hey, this is all going to fly in at one time. The text option, like the one you selected in step 8, are available only when animating text, not graphics. So go to slide 3, and it tells us to click the graphic in the upper right corner. On the animations tab, we're going to click add animation. Under the more emphasis, and click more emphasis effects, which is right here. Okay, 
In the Add Emphasis Effects dialog box, we're going to click Pulse. <clears throat> the effect is previewed on the graphic. We're going to click OK. And on the Animations tab in the Duration box, we're going to um, click up until it gets to 4.00. Click Preview. To preview the animation at its new duration setting. Okay, and we're going to save our presentation. Next, it tells us to go to slide 5 and we're going to select the graphic. On the animations tab, it tells us to click add animations and then click more motion paths. The Add Motion Paths dialog box appears. In the Add Motion Path dialog box, we're going to scroll down to the Special section and we're going to select Swoosh. The animation is previewed on the slide. We're going to click OK to apply the animation and a dotted line appears on the graphic showing the motion path. This dotted line will not appear in Slideshow View. Click the Effects option, and then click Reverse Path Direction. The swoosh effect is previewed again, this time going in an opposite direction. Save the presentation. Alright, still using the same file, Lobby Final Version 2, tells us to go to slide 6, and um, select the graphic. On the animations tab, we're going to click add animation and then click more entrance effects. In the exciting section, it tells us to click pinwheel and then click OK. On the anima animations tab, open the start drop down arrow and we're going to choose after previous. In the duration box, we're going to select 3.00, and in the delay box, we're going to move it until one second is selected. The animation will start one second after the previous event and will last for three seconds. It tells us to click the preview button to check the new settings. With the graphic still selected, we're going to click Add Animation. And we're going to click More Exit Effects. This time we're going to choose Pinwheel again. Which is down here. Okay, we're going to click OK. Notice that there is a 0 and a 1 icon near the upper left corner of the graphic. The 0 represents the first animation effect, the entrance, and the 1 represents the second effect. It tells us to click the 1 icon to make sure that the exit effect animation is selected. On the animations tab, in the delay box, we're going to Click the up arrow until 3 seconds is selected. Tells us to click preview to watch the entire entrance animation sequence. <coughs> okay, and now it tells us to click the bulleted list. And on the animations tab, we're going to click... Oops, let's go back to that. All right. Click the bullet to list. On the animations tab, we're going to click add animations and then we're going to click fade. Notice that each bulleted item has a numbered icon to its left. All right. We're going to click the one icon 
to the left of the graphic. And on the animations tab, we're going to click move later. The exit effect moves to position 7 after the bulleted list will be complete. It tells us to click the bulleted list again. And on the animations tab, we're going to open the start drop down list and we're going to choose with previous. The open, then open effects options drop down list and we're going to click by paragraph. Okay, so it's previewing. Alrighty, and next uh, we're going to go ahead and hit save. Using the animations pane, still using the same document. On the animations tab, we're going to click animations pane button. The animation pane appears at the right. It lists the three animation items for slide six. Click the gray bar that separates the second and the third animation. Okay, the list expands to show each bulleted list item as a separate animation event. When the list is expanded, each item is edited separately. If you want to change the setting for the entire list, you should collapse the list again before changing settings. It tells us to click the gray bar again. <coughs> um, and in the animations pane, we're going to click content placeholder animation. And then click the down arrow to its right to open menu. Let's um, just right here. And we're going to choose effects options and then click on the text animation tab and mark in reverse order checkbox. Mark the entire or automatically after checkbox and click the up arrow to set it to three seconds and we'll click OK. Notice that the start settings on automatically. Um, whoa, 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 where am I? Notice the start settings on the animation tab has changed to after previous. Okay. If the animation does not preview automatically, you can click the preview button to um, watch it again. Okay, it tells us to go to slide one and click in the slide and then press control. So I'm just clicking inside and then I'm going to press control A to select all objects on the slide. On the animations tab, we're going to click add animations and then in the entrance section, click float in. Okay. The same animation effect is applied to all objects. On the animations tab, we're going to open the start drop down arrow and we're going to click with previous. In the animation pane, select the animation for title one. And press the delete key to remove the animation for that object. Select only the slide's title box, Baldwin Museum, and click the Add Animations. And in the Emphasis section, we're going to click Wave. In the Animations pane, confirm the title object animation is already selected, and then click the Move Up arrow. which I believe is right here at the top of the task pane, three times to move the animation to the top of the list so it executes first. 
open the start drop down arrow and click after previous setting the wave animation occurs after the slide appears in the animation pane we're going to click the arrow to the right of the animation to open its its menu I think it's right here. We're still on the title one. Okay, and we're going to choose effects options. And then we're going to open the sound drop down list. And we're going to choose arrow and click OK. If you heard that, that was the preview. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and hit save to save our presentation. All right, using the animation painter. On slide one, we're gonna select the Explore the World of Science text box. On the Animations tab, click Animation Painter. Go to slide eight and click Where to Find Us. The animation is copied to that text box. It tells us to close the animation pane and then save our presentation. Next, we're going to be adding media clips to a presentation. Okay, first thing it tells us to do is to save our presentation as, in our Lesson 9 folder, as version 3. Okay, it tells us to go to slide 1 and on the Insert tab, Click the arrow under the audio button. Go to slide one and on the insert tab, click the arrow under the audio button. So you need to click on media first if you don't see it and then click the arrow for audio. And we're gonna choose record audio. The record sound dialog box opens where you can name your sound. We're going to type welcome slide. In the name box and click the red record button. The blue square button becomes active and we will say welcome to Baldwin Museum and then click OK. So I'm going to record this. Here we go. Welcome to Baldwin Museum. Okay, and then we can play it back to hear it. Welcome to Baldwin Museum. Okay, so then it tells us to click OK. And a sound icon will appear on the center of the slide tells us to press F5, which is the F5 button at the top of your keyboard. Okay, that takes us to our preview. Welcome and, to Baldwin Museum. And when I click on the sound icon, it will actually play that for us. I'm going to hit escape. Okay, and we're going to press, um, let's see, select the sound icon on the slide, and we're going to press delete on the keyboard to remove it. With slide one still selected, or still displayed on the insert tab, we're going to click the arrow under the audio button, and we're going to choose audio on my PC. The insert audio dialog box opens and we're going to navigate to the data files for this lesson. Okay, lesson 9. And we're going to choose Beethoven's Ninth. And we're going to click insert. So the sound icon appears in the center of the slide. 
really fast though I just want to make you guys aware okay that in order for you to have sound on your presentation it has to be a specific file format and in this case you can tell what the file format is by looking over here okay so this one is an mp3 file so for sound you need to have an m saved as an mp3 file in order for it to play and that's generally the case on most um, multimedia things that you're creating okay so it tells us to um, insert and icon appears on the audio tools playback tab it tells us to open the start drop down menu and we're going to choose automatically mark the hide during the show button and on the audio tools playback tab where it says volume we're going to choose medium Figure 8 dash or 9 dash 8 shows the audio tools playback tab and the con playback controls. View the first two slides in slideshow view. Notice that the sound quits after the first slide. So when I click to my next slide, the sound automatically stops. I'm going to hit escape. Okay, on the transition tab, we're going to open the sound drop down list. And we're going to click no sound. And then we're going to click apply to all. Select the sound icon on slide one and on the audio tools playback tab it tells us to mark the play across slides button. Okay and then it says watch the first several slides in slideshow view. This time, notice that the sound continues as you move from slide 1 to 2. So let's go ahead and I'm going to go to slideshow view. So as I click to next slide, the sound is continuing. Okay. Press escape to go to normal view. Um, it tells us to save our presentation, and we're going to pause and leave the presentation open to use in the next exercise. Next, we're going to be adding a video to a slide. So we're still using the same version. It tells us to go to slide 9, and we're going to click the Insert tab, Media, this time choosing <coughs> Insert Video. And we're going to choose um, um, we're going to go to video on my PC. Oh, excuse me, sorry, cancel. Instead of choosing this up here, we're going to click down here, insert video. And from a file, we'll click browse. And I want to find in my Infotech PowerPoint student data files lesson nine. We're going to add the Sunspot MP4 file. Okay, notice that there's two different file types. So I want to click the one that says MP4. Go ahead and click insert. 
Okay, the clip appears in the placeholder with the playback controls beneath it. On the animations tab, we're going to click animation pane. The animation pane opens. Notice that there is an animation event for the video clip already there. It tells us to close the animation pane and on the video tools playback tab, we're going to open the start drop down menu and we're going to choose automatically and mark the loop until stopped. Checkbox. This action makes the clip continue to play until the slide advances. It says to click the um, up increment arrow button on the fade, fade in text box until it reads 0.5 one half of a second do the same for the fade out okay and on the slideshow tab we're going to click from current slide okay to watch to watch our uh, show okay and you can see it's just like a spinning Sun. This video is. Okay. And as it comes to the end, it will just keep playing. It'll start over. Okay. I'm going to hit escape to go back. <clears throat> okay. So we're going to save the presentation. Next, we're going to work on timing a video clip. So go to slide 9 and it tells us to select our video clip. On the Video Tools Playback tab, it tells us to click Trim Video. Right here. Okay, Trim Video right here. And it tells us to drag the green start marker to approximately point zero or to two seconds I'm just gonna type in right there two seconds okay all right and then it tells us to drag the end red marker to 23.566 and you know you can kind of type that in too to get it exactly all right it tells us to go ahead and click ok um, our clip should now be trimmed and it tells us to save our presentation we're still using the same document. It tells us to insert a new slide after slide 8. I'm just going to click the new slide button. Um, and it tells us to title it Find an Interactive Map. Okay, we're going to open a browser window and open a search engine and then go back to PowerPoint. So to do that, you're going to open up Google and this is a search engine. Okay, and then go back to PowerPoint is what it says. Okay, it says select an area. Okay, on the insert tab, we're going to um, on the insert tab media section, we're going to choose screen recording. Okay, so I'm going to make my um, directions a little bit smaller. And I'm going to make this half a page here with that there and then this here for now. 
Okay, because we're going to do a little screen recording here. So under media, screen recording. Okay, and then it says select the area you want to court, which is the browser window in this example. So I'm going to drag my box basically around my um, browser window. Okay, and then it tells us to click the record button. Okay, and then we're going to type 123 John Street, comma, Matthews, North Carolina, 28822. Okay, and then find the map for the museum. I'm going to go to maps. Okay. And find the map for the museum. And then it tells us to click stop recording. Which in order to do that. Oh, here it is. Stop. Okay. Okay. Um. Remember that this is a fictional address and, so, lo and location, so even though you'll find a map, the details will not match the map on slide 8. Okay, so we're going to save this presentation. Okay, and now you basically have a recording of a video. Okay, and then we're going to type 123, John, right here on your presentation, which is kind of cool save. So that's kind of a new neat feature that PowerPoint has recently added, which can make it, I'd say, a little bit better than Google Slides. Because you can't do that in a Google Slide. Or add video from a previous file. You have to use YouTube videos. Um, okay, so make sure you save we're still using the same document and next we're going to add choose a poster frame so it tells us to click on slide 10 and click the video clip to make it active we're going to click the play button to begin its playback when the image on screen shows the sun spot the dark spot in the center we're going to click the pause button so that's about in the center Okay, on the Video Tools Format tab, we're going to click Poster Frame and click Current Frame. And then we're going to click Save to save the presentation. Okay, a poster frame is an image that displays on the slide when the video clip is not actively playing. You can use an outside image, but it's often easier to select a frame from the video clip itself. All right. So make sure you save the presentation. On slide 10, we're going to click the video clip again. And on the Video Tools Format tab, we're going to click the More button in the Video Styles group. And in the subtle section, we're going to choose simple frame white. The frame of the video clip changes. Okay, it tells us to click video shapes and then click rounded rectangle, which is this one. Okay. The shape of the video changes as well. It tells us to click the um, video border. And we're going to choose periwinkle accent 5, darker of 50%. Click video effects and we're going to choose glow. 
periwinkle, five point. Just a smaller one. Okay. Click video f effects button again and point to shadow. And, um, let's see. Click the perspective diagonal upper right. Just the second one. Alrighty. Okay, figure 9-12 shows the completed uh, formatting. On the video tools format tab, we're going to choose corrections. And we're going to choose brightness. Zero, normal, contrast plus 20. So it's like this one right here. Okay. On the slideshow tab, <coughs> clear, <coughs> clear the show media controls. This action prevents the media controls under the video clip from appearing in slideshow view. And we're going to save the presentation. So these video controls right here will be gone in slideshow view. Take note, part of the clip's appearance in the media control bar or the thick gray bar that appears beneath the video clip. If the presentation is self-running, you might prefer to hide that from the audience. To do so, clear the Show Media Controls checkbox on the Slideshow tab as you did in Step 9. Okay, we're still on the same document. It tells us to click on Slide 10, and we're going to select the video clip again, if not already selected. On the Video Tools Format tab, we're going to type in 2.4 in the height box. Okay, um, the value should have changed and the width changes proportionally. It tells us to click the video clip again if necessary. And on the View tab, we're going to mark Guides to turn on the guides. Drag the horizontal guide down so it aligns with the one inch mark. So I'm dragging this down so it's right here with the one inch mark. It says move the text box containing the bullets up so its left corner aligns with the intersection of the guides at the left side of the slide. Up to there. Okay, and then move the video clip so its upper right corner aligns with the intersection of the guides at the right side of the slide. Let's say about about right there. Doesn't really have a plate way to snap it in. Just you know, make it so that it looks about even on both sides. Okay. About to there. Um, then turn off the guides by clearing the guides checkbox on the view tab. It says because there's a glow around the clips border, it may not appear to align precisely with the guides. The glow may hang slightly over the lines. Okay, so we're going to save the presentation. Next, we're going to compress our media, so it tells us to click the File tab, and we're going to click the Compress Media button, and we're going to choose Internet Quality. The Compress Media dialog box opens, showing the progress of the compressing each clip. When each clip shows complete, you can click Close. So, already compressed, those two are complete. We're going to click close. Tells us to save our presentation. 
and then we can close and exit PowerPoint. And you're done with lesson nine.